In this video, we're going to take a look at the hitch kick and how you can perfect this technique. There's going to be an emphasis on the takeoff and the landing aspects. At the outset, I want to say that there's no significant difference between the hang and hitch kick when performed optimally in terms of achieving jump distance. In fact, the takeoff positions are virtually identical for both, with the free leg being driven in, held, and the foreleg pushed out and then pulled back under the body. The delay is crucial to allow for an optimised drive off of the board to enable the jumper to climb into the air. The pulling back of the free leg will counteract the forward rotation that takes over the body when in flight. You'll see that Sarah, who's recently jumped 6 meters 31, creates very long levers in the air and these, as I indicate, counteract that forward rotation. It's important to pull the free leg straight down under the body and have the opposing arm high up overhead, creating that long, thin shape that will counteract rotation. Moving into landing, the free leg is now behind the body and the takeoff leg advances to the front. So this is the half part of the one and a half hitch kick that Sarah is performing. There are of course other variations such as a two and a half, that's two cycles in the air, and then the half for the landing. Been following my videos, you'll know that Sarah has had issues with her landing, i.e. getting the feet well enough in front of her to get an optimized landing position. With Sarah being over six foot tall, the levers create much longer movements compared to Spanovich, who also hitches quicker. The length of the jump is also a determining factor in that if you're jumping closer to seven meters as opposed to 650, you've got more time to extend your legs into the landing. As a coach, I'd much rather have an athlete who can take off optimally and have problems with their landing, which we can of course work on, than have the reverse scenario. The run-up and the takeoff creates the majority of the impetus for the distance achieved, around 95%. So the landing, although very important, is very much secondary in the great scheme of things. Take a look at these images of Spanovich jumping from an article I wrote for Athletics Weekly to further identify the key positions of the hitch kick. Having just said what I have, we do still need to work on the landing, but this is a bit of a difficult one in that the landing dynamics are very much set up by what happens prior, i.e. in terms of the mid-air action. In terms of the 95% I mentioned of jump distance being achieved, the penultimate step and going flat-footed is a key aspect this gets the hips to move through into the takeoff and gets the free leg out further in front of the torso. It also helps with the balance of the jump and you'll see with that freeze frame a more upright torso as the legs extend into the landing. And keeping the upright torso is something that we've been working on recently and it does seem to have paid dividends as you'll see here on her jump of 6 meters 31 with the legs being better extended prior to landing and making a much better fist of the landing. Potentially, and partly tongue-in-cheek, if Sarah jumped a further 20-odd centimetres, she'd probably now be able to get a perfect landing. You're watching some drills that can be used to improve landing. The muscles of the hips and lower abs are crucial in terms of being able to lift the legs into a strong landing position. However, no matter how strong you are, if you don't combat the forward rotation in flight through optimised technique, you won't be able to hold the legs up. It is crucial, as I keep saying, to work on your mid-air action to perfect the movements and achieve the long positions needed. It takes time and you need to be patient and persist and really work on your technical side of things too many athletes I know spend too much time getting strong, getting faster, getting more dynamic, all crucial of course, but neglect their technical performance. And in doing this, 
they'll never jump as far as they could if they paid as much attention to the technical aspects of the event. As usual, thanks for listening and good luck with your training and competition and do subscribe to the channel and leave any comments you may have in the section below or on my Instagram account.